morning, good morning everybody. Today is marvelous Monday. It is crisp and cool and we are in Gilmer County, Georgia. It is apple country where the temperatures are dropping and we love that. So the temperatures are cool and apples rule and apples do rule during this time of year. Apples often rule year round and I just saw the new ETC phone book and it had um, grape vineyards on it and also vineyards rule. So we will say grapes and apples rule. I'm so excited to uh, be back with our friend Jack who is going to be here in a little bit talking about Fogus and this is Friends of Gilmer Animal Shelter and we have some sad news. The shelter is full. That means you need to open your heart, open your pocketbook, and go out to the shelter and get to know some of the many, many animals that are looking for a forever home. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but I have some fantastic photos and a little bit of footage and a little bit of this and a little bit of that that I want to share with you. I did the back roads and took some photos, got some great pictures of a place that you can visit and it is a lot of fun and if you want to pick flowers you can it's 10 bucks to pick the flowers it's really really cool and um, it is about this is on old highway 5 old highway 5 if anybody knows me knows that when I travel and I'm not in route to do a live show in a timely manner I am on old highway 5 this is between the Gilmer County line and about um, maybe a mile from the line, from the Pickens line. So it still has a Talking Rock address, but it is just absolutely beautiful and just a beautiful place to spend an afternoon, especially a sunny, crisp, cool Ella J day. And uh, if, there's, if this isn't the way you say welcome to Ella J, I don't know what way is. So beautiful zinnias and sunflowers and corn, a corn maze. And um, it's just really, really cool. And Evelyn, I took her out there the day after her birthday to share a, just a visit with her. And they weren't open, but we went in. We sent him a message and said, hey, Tim, we're on your property and we're taking pictures. And he was okay with that. So, so anyway, Evelyn went back yesterday, or, yeah, Saturday, and got to take some more photos with her family and just had a great time. And they're precious, precious folks who were there that day, and uh, I said, if y'all will get out over here, I'll take your picture, and I did. And uh, just beautiful, beautiful family out enjoying a ride on the back roads. Now, we've also got some photos of a precious baby that I spent some time with this weekend. And anybody who knows me and sees my Facebook page knows that Zanna is like on Facebook with me every single day. She is growing, she is gurgling, she is gooing and cooing and just making all kinds of sounds. She is absolutely precious and she does look just like her beautiful mama. So um, what an angel she is. I got to spend some time with her and there she is. Is that not just precious? Look at those fat little cheeks, fat little cheeks like her granny. <laughs> and for everybody who's commenting, no, I have not had any surgery that changed my life other than correcting a bunch of problems. Cause somebody, I've had several people say, are you sick? No, I'm really good now because they have fixed all the problems. I did have some serious problems and the doctor has fixed it all. So no, I'm not dying. I'm not sick. I'm really, really doing good. But it took some massive surgery. I was out for like eight hours and 10 minutes counting recovery. So, so, okay, now we have a photo of a gentleman that is not sick. Vic Davis was in the hospital and y'all were praying for him, praying for him, praying for him. We have a picture that was taken last night at the top lot and I wanna show you the pink, beautiful sky. If this doesn't motivate you to get out and get to know these beautiful mountains where we are lucky enough to be every single day, Man, this is Motivation 101. It is absolutely gorgeous. The fall, the temperatures, I don't know what happens, but when that pink sky shows up, it really shows up and shows out. And this is one of my, now these are all heart of the home photos. We can show those too. What is going on? Okay, there's Vic Davis, okay. That one, you can't see how pink it is there, but in my camera and on my Facebook, man, you can see how beautiful and pink it was. And that was something, Dwight actually took that photo and that is just the coolest ever of our friend Vic Davis. After his surgery, after his recovery, he is doing great. Now, can we go back to the heart of the home photos and let's show those? 
Okay, this was such a fun shoot. Um, Dwight had never been involved in doing a cooking show, and we just had a blast. And it all started because he has this amazing cooker that I'm totally in love with. That cooker just does it all with firewood. It was really, really cool. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do salmon patties on it, and I'm gonna do steaks on it, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna learn how to cook on that crazy cooker that is too wheels off of a school bus. Is that not wild? But the scene is just perfect. The setting is just perfect. Get out today and find yourself somewhere for a beautiful picnic. Find yourself somewhere to just go and sit by a creek and, and video this. Take somebody that you want to share that experience with. Take your mom, your granny, your aunts, your uncles. Take folks who don't get out very often and show them the back roads of Gilmer County because if you have not seen the back roads, you don't know Gilmer County. If all you know is the roundabout, you are missing a bunch of stuff because there's some beautiful, beautiful back roads here. Now look at that. That deer was cued to just walk up as we were beginning the cooking show. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? And the deer was just kind of scoping out what we were cooking. So <laughs> I thought that was so neat. But just a, a fun day get out and build yourself a fire in the woods and just enjoy the time so okay welcome to my guest jack has been with us how, how many, many times, times? Three, three or four you were here on my birthday you brought me a birthday cake i did uh, in fact and balloons and some other things i remember did, that and i had yeah. the privilege to celebrate your birthday with you and so did chairman charlie Parrish. absolutely absolutely and we talked about a bunch of things and uh, you look a lot healthier now i feel better yeah i feel so much better and, and no i'm not sick and i'm not dying so many people are like you know she looks kind of peaked well no i don't look peaked maybe it's the lighting my color's good, I feel great. Um, a lot of folks, I've, I've heard comments that she must not be well. Yes, she is, <laughs> yes she is. My color's just changing a little bit, well, so. You know, most, I'm good. Of, most of my friends know I'm also an ordained minister. Yeah. And I do funerals and weddings. <laughs> I don't want you thank, to do a funeral. <laughs> thank God I'm not have to prepare, prepare any eulogies. No. I, any I've, got, I've got two preachers that are going to do the front and the end of my funeral. And then I've got a crazy man that's going to do the middle. And the middle will be what's fun because I told him, I said, you have to promise me you will be honest and you will make people laugh. And I'm going to give you a script to go by of all the craziness in my life. Jack, when we look back at our lives, all we can do is say, you got to have fun. You gotta have fun. Well, God has a plan for us. Sometimes we don't really see that, whether it's working with people or animals, and sometimes trials and tribulations mm -hmm. in our life. But usually there's a silver lining or a rainbow around the corner. We just don't know it. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so neat to work with animals. I can be down, I've got back problems, and can be down on myself, and. Mm -hmm can get the pity wagon rolling. Mm -hmm. But when my three chihuahuas jump up there and I look them <laughs> in the eye and they lick me in the face, and you're it like, just okay. sort of goes away. They don't care that you have back problems. They do they? don't know I got back problems. <laughs> James Dean, he's the biggest. He's sort of a lanky looking chihuahua, chewing mix, and he weighs about 16 or 17 pounds. And expects me to lug him around and you know what a back problem I still lug him and the other two are small but they're sort of neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah and it does help your attitude doesn't it? Oh it does. Yeah yeah. Gosh animals don't expect anything in return. They mm -hmm. just don't. Right. They, they right. just want to. And they don't love. care what restaurant you take them to as long as you give them something to eat. <laughs> well that's my problem with James Dean. He's got uh, pancreatitis, and I oh, gotta, be no, gotta be careful. Oh careful! Oh gosh, he's on a special diet. That stuff costs more than steak. Oh my goodness! It does. Oh. And uh, but uh, you have know, you so. considered getting James Dean a part-time job? <laughs> he may need a job. Uh, well, he's <laughs> he twelve could be a guard years. Dog he's twelve, somewhere. and a sister. We've got a sister out of the same litter, Coco Chanel, and we got a fifteen-year-old. Wow. Max. A million. Oh wow! And we call him the old man. Yeah, he's yeah. been on the show with us. He has. Yes, yeah, Max is on the show with us. Yeah, yeah he's been on yeah. the show two or three times back. Yep. And you know, since I, since I've been here, Sherry, you redid the studio. You got. I like it staff. better over here. I, I think today I do look a little white and I do look a little pale, and people will be saying she really is sick. <laughs> and she, no, I'm not sick. No, I'm good. No, I'm not sick. Uh, Jack, let's talk a little bit about the fact that the shelter is 
really overcrowded today. It's full. I was down there Monday and talking with Daniel, the director, and uh, had a lot of cages out in between the runs. All the runs were full. Uh, we're trying to figure out what's going on. Sherry and I think we talked about it a show or two back that people during COVID, they mm -hmm. were home. home and they had time on their hands and they wanted a board change, and board. We, board. They got dogs and cats and now people are getting back in the groove and they're going back Traveling, to work. going on vacation. And it seems that possibly mm -hmm. some of those animals are coming back to shelters. Now, it's just not Gilmer County. Daniel keeps a pretty informational thing going with uh, other rescues and other shelters. And it seems to be uh, a thing across the board where they're starting wow. to fill back up. Wow. Some of our rescues, it takes our uh, uh, dogs are full too, and they're not taking as many. Goodness. So Goodness. that's where you folks come in. And that's here. what makes spay and neuter so important. It does. It makes spay and neuter so very important. Now, have y'all got an event coming up where you're going to be offering deals on spay oh, and neuter we've again? Got a, we, we'll talk about those. we got all kinds of events coming up on November the 5th. For you folks that haven't had your dogs or cats vaccinated yet, we're going to have a low-cost mobile vaccination clinic by the courthouse, big parking lot. November the 5th, Saturday, it's going to be from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Bring your dogs and your cats down there. You don't have to get out of the car. All you do is pay for the shots. Drive through. Yeah. Drive through. And it's Easier than quick. a drive through at a restaurant. It is. And at the same time, at 10 o'clock, while that event's going on, same location, location, we're going to have a spay and neuter certificate sale. Mm hmm. So it will be a separate line. Come on down when you think. It's first come, first serve, folks. We have about 30 certificates. So once those are sold out, uh, we shut the line 30 down. 30 certificates, yeah. Yeah, because we have to do it on a funding basis. We can't right. do more stuff that we have our uh, donors and funders mm -hmm. give us money for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say, Sherry, you mentioned the spay and neuter makes a difference. Focus has done over 1,000 oh spay and neuters since it's 2017, crazy. over 1,000. Wow. So you can imagine how many dogs and cats that are unwanted or abandoned mm -hmm. must be on the uh, streets and roadways of Gilmer County. Mm -hmm. We had to done all the spay and neuters. Yeah. And so does Homer Bound. They do a lot of spay and neuters too. Well, I was with a gentleman on Friday afternoon showing him some property and he said, I have too many cats and I think another one's pregnant and I said, get those females fixed. Get those females fixed. And he said, well, we don't have a mice problem when we have cats. I said, you can have a limited number of cats, but do not let a cat run around and <clears throat> not fix them. Capture them, take them in, get them fixed. It's a very simple fix. And they don't know, you know, I mean, you're not destroying their life. You're giving them a better life. They because are. if a mom has kittens over and over and over, the female that I took in, they said she had had like seven or nine litters, they could tell, and she was so thin. And that's not good for their health. You know, it's not good for them. So give them a better shot at life by getting your pets spayed and neutered. Sherry, Do it. Sherry, talking about cats, we also run a feral cat program. Mm -hmm. We're dedicated to reduce the feral cat population in mm -hmm. Gilmer County. We started a program two years ago with the shelter, where the shelter, we in took the calls, did a uh, spreadsheet with the names and stuff, made sure they're really feral cats. Mm -hmm. And the shelter would go out, set a trap, trap them, we'd have them spay and neuter and return them. Or if they didn't want them back, find, it, find a barn or a farm that one of these cats. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost our animal control officer, just got one back at the shelter, but we're still doing that feral cat program, but we're sort of twinking a little bit because now if you have a feral cat population around your house, and I'm talking about feral cats, not your house cats. Mm -hmm. If you go on our webpage, focusnow.com, There'll be places where you can contact us. Contact us, let us know that. If you're willing to go to the shelter and get a trap, bring it back to your house, 
trap the feral cat or cats. Mm -hmm. We'll pay for the spay and neuter. You'll have to take them to Dr. Chester's office in Jasper, and we'll give you a certificate, and you have those feral cats spayed and neutered, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And feral cats are good to have around because they're not, they're self-maintenance. I hate to say that. They're like having teenagers that grow up and get a job and can take care of themselves, aren't they? That's right. You know, the, <laughs> you know a, a true feral cat's about three or four generations mm -hmm. outside, and you very seldom see those. You hear them fighting like cats and dogs at the in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. You smell mm -hmm. where they sprayed around. Mm -hmm. Then you've got uh, outside cats mm -hmm. that are sore Big feral difference. cats. Yeah. But they'll come up to you and maybe let you get around them. I mean, those are the ones we're targeting, the outside cats, a feral cat population. Uh, if you've taken a cat or dog into your home, you know, there's an expectation that you should be able to take care of them and stuff too. But we still offer those low cost or no cost spay and neuter mm -hmm. certificates to the folks that come and want to buy our certificate from us. Right. Okay, so November the 5th, you're going to have the drive through for the shots. Starts at 8 o'clock. Runs okay. at 12. Okay. Then what's then, the next thing you're going to do? Then that same day, 10 to 12, is the spay and neuter certificates. And they're going to be at? Same place. Same place. Just okay. be a different line. I'll have two okay. lines set up, and you can go one way for uh, vaccination and one way for spay and neuter. Okay. Okay. But and only 30 certificates available. Only 30. So the first 30 you cars in line. You better get line early. Yeah. You better, yeah, yeah. you better be early. It's 10 to 12, but I'm sure people will be showing up a couple hours early oh, yeah. to get those certificates. Yeah, absolutely. We only charge $25. That's not the cost. That's your cost, but uh, we pay the difference mm -hmm. through donations mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we got a uh, What's next? bunch of other functions come up on uh, October the 1st. Tractor Supply that's been a partner with Fogus and other communities other community uh, nonprofits is having a uh, farmer's market in their parking lot. Focus will set up a booth there with other vendors in the area and we'll be talking about volunteer activities, uh, be giving stuff out to the public. So come on down and support uh, Tractor Supply on October 1st in their parking lot. And what, do you, what will people be selling, like local goods, local oh, honey, local hell, whatever? They'll, they'll have vendors in there, so it's, it's just a tractor supply farmer's market. Okay, just, that's cool. And focus will have a booth there. Let me put these three in last song. Okay. Glenn and I were out in Carter's Lake yesterday. We got a pontoon bed out there, so we went out there to, yesterday was my birthday, to just have a Happy quiet, birthday! Thank you. Happy have birthday. a quiet birthday, and we brought the boat back in, and I had my prescription sunglasses uh -oh. in my pocket I leaned over uh -oh. to put the boat up and plop. It's only 47 feet there. I thought about You didn't jump in and get it. I thought them. about diving in and get them, so I've got my... Uh -oh. And I've got to check your mic, because I think your mic is on backwards. It is. It's inside your shirt. So, y'all, we're going to take a commercial break right now while I play with his mic. Oh, so I, I should put it on saying, the outside? It's, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a commercial break time. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm not taking my shirt off. I'm just removing the mic. Okay, Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, 
Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. High-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. Well, y'all quit showing that fire. It makes me want to grab marshmallows. Jack, that makes me want to go grab a bag of marshmallows and sit here and roast the marshmallows and eat the whole thing. So s'more. There's something about weather and coolness and fires, and my kids would tell you I might be a pyromaniac. I love a fire. Even in July, I love a fire. Now, let's set the word, let's set the word on fire next year. Can, can we tell a little bit about how I met Dwight Sanford? You were responsible, really. It was funny as crap. Well. Charlie was, had to be out of town. Charlie was out of town. I got to take Charlie's place. reason why Charlie's out of town. We and poor to Dwight change, probably lived her We had to change the date on St. <laughs> Patrick's, Patrick's Day yep. last year. We had a late. Every time you do it, it rains. Oh, well, this year, last year, we had a late winter storm, winter mm -hmm, warnings, mm -hmm. ice, snow. So we yep. scrambled the day before and canceled the event, and we did a bunch of advertising. Yep. So we're redoing the event, and I was talking to our publicity chair, Susan Liebert, and I want to give a shout-out to Susan. Yeah. Susan, thank you for all you do, Susan. Oh, she yeah. gets us on the Sherry yeah, Show. Yeah. She She's gets us in the newspaper. She does all the advertising. She does a great job. So I was talking to Susan, and she says, you know, I would like to get Sherry involved in the event. You got anything you got anything going? I said, well, <laughs> yeah. I need somebody. I need a VIP celebrity to ride with Dwight Sanford in his antique vehicle. Yep. For the parade. And yep. She said, well, let me check with Sherry. Yep. So. And you know what I told her at first, don't you? What was that? No, <laughs> Susan, I don't have time. No, Susan, I can't do it. No, Susan, there's no way I can do that. I don't have time. And like, finally, I said, they're so good to me and they're so sweet. I'm going to do it. And the rest is history. So we what happened hit is it off and it's been such fun. A short so fun. Ride. car ride turned into a long journey. You know, the first thing he said to me was, I guess you've heard my song. And I said, no, what song? And he said, you're kidding, right? And I said, no. And he said, you haven't heard my song? I said, no. And he said, you're kidding. I said, no. So he said, I said, sing it to me. And he said, well, I'll tell you the words. And I thought, he didn't write a song or he would have been singing it to me. He told me the words and I thought, and then I realized, because she had told me, I remembered she said, you know, he's a big to-do, and he's really great with music, and he's written some really cool songs about Ella J. But I thought she was kidding. I thought everybody was throwing this at me and kidding me. So now that y'all get to see him every week, and I, I have to say this, he's not here today, so he won't be glowing and basking in the sunlight. Every single day, I get positive messages, positive calls. Everybody says we love when he's on. Well, he does one day a week because that's all the time he's willing to give up for all the other things he does. 
But thank you for the positive comments and thank you for being part of why I met Dwight Sanford because we just, we, we developed a great friendship early on and it was about cars and music and things that we had in common including antiques. He loves antiques, I love antiques. He loves antique quilts, I love antique quilts. He loves country cooking and I'm a country cook. So we're gonna share now, Jack, we're gonna share something. Dwight had never done television at all before you, you're responsible for him being sitting here. But I called him one day and I said, look, we're gonna go back to doing Heart of the Home. Would you be interested in doing that? And he said, well, I don't know how that works. And I said, well, I'll do all the hard work. All you have to do is be you and sing. How simple. I cooked all this food and all the man had to do was sit there and sing. He has it made and he got to eat. And so we're gonna share a little bit of Tim's footage. We are back to producing Heart of the Home and thank God um, we have Tim is going to be doing that for me. We had done a couple of experiments and they worked. And so we're going to share some footage with y'all and it's right next door to Ernie Taylor that we adore. He's such a good guy. Such a good guy. Chicken farmer. Chicken farmer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and we want to give a shout out to everybody at Focus who does volunteer and to Susan who she kind of put the heat on me. She said, we really want you to do the parade. We really want you to be there. And I was like, I'm on duty, I can't, I'm so busy, and I'm so glad, and thank you, thank you, thank you, it turned my life around. So a lot of fun, a lot of, lot of interesting places, and uh, yeah, it, it has been a fun ride. So here we go to a little blip it from Heart of the Home shot at the top lot at a house um, that we have on the market. This house is on the market. It is $2.99, $5.99, absolutely wonderful kitchen to cook in two big porches to sit and enjoy, and I just went in and invaded the house and did a heart of the home. Here we go. The heart of the home, he's calling you in. Sherry's in the kitchen, cooking with her friends, sharing recipes together, stories and songs, making new memories a heart of the home. Hey guys, welcome to Heart of the Home. The Heart of the Home really is the kitchen where people gather together to spend time with each other, enjoy great food, great conversation, and today we're going to have a great conversation and a whole lot of music from the man himself, Mr. LJ. Now let me tell you how I got him here. Halibut from Alaska. That stuff's good. <laughs> Did that do the trick? Yeah, that don't <laughs> grow into a creek, does it? <laughs> no, it does not. Wow. No, it does not. My granddaughter actually caught this in Alaska, shipped it to us, and we have cooked it up, and it is yummy. It yummy. is good. I had to do two things to get to have to spend some time with this man. I had to buy these. You know what this is? I do. What? Tell folks what it is. That's a rutabaga. Tell folks what I did when you Smart said Smart folks eat rutabagas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to cook him some. <laughs> we have had several months of just good fun, good times wow. from these mountains where you live and you love and you write the music about the mountains that you love. Mm -hmm. We are at the foot of Fort Mountain, yep. right? Yes, we are. And what do you call this place besides heaven? Pretty close? This, yeah, it's close. Uh, it's very close. I spend a lot of time. I go up on Fort Mountain. Time. Mm -hmm. I hike in those trails and I walk around the lake. And now some of those trails on Fort Mountain, you can get more hiking than you bargained for. <laughs> uh -oh. And didn't you see a bear a couple of nights ago? Yesterday. Yep. Yes, I did. Yep. And did the bear like you or are you scared of he it? He didn't seem too interested. Oh, good. And that's a good thing. That's isn't a good it? thing. Yeah. 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 Now, I'm going to admit something to you. You don't like tartar sauce, and I didn't make tartar sauce. I've never eaten fish without tartar sauce, but you get more taste of the fish without tartar sauce, don't you? Yeah. Tartar so, sauce ain't nothing but funny tasting mayonnaise. Camouflage. It's yeah. camouflage for bad mm -hmm. fish. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is not bad fish. Not mm -hmm. bad fish. Let's talk a little bit about the history of um, the, my, table, my. the table we're sitting at. Yep. Tell me about it. I went with my mother and daddy in 1964 out to Latham Town from Freehome area. Mm -hmm. There was a store out there. I don't know, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but they sold furniture. 
and we bought a new kitchen set that evening in 1964. Imagine that. That's when the Beatles came to America. <laughs> that is too cool. I know. That is too cool. I remember loading this up and bringing it home that night, that evening. And we've had it many, many years after that. And then things turned, you know, and things were different. And uh, and then uh, some years ago, way back, actually, everything's way back. Uh, I was over at Mom's one evening in Chatsworth, and she showed me, we was out there looking at an old building, and there was this table. Oh, wow. And I said, oh, gosh. <laughs> you got to have it. Yeah, so yeah. I got it, and we restored and fixed, and, uh -huh. and here it is. Yeah, well, it I've is. I've eaten a lot of food off of this table. Well, it's retro, and today let's talk a little bit about the menu because the menu was designed completely around Mr. LJ in order to get him to do live music for us and to let us do his beautiful, amazing, amazing songs that you have written. I had to do fried turnips, collard greens, pinto beans, cream-style corn, halibut, coleslaw, sweet potatoes. Is that all? I am a negotiator. Yes, you are. And you're I don't good. I negotiate these deals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, a good. If one. you're going to get any singing done. Oh, and wings with blackberry sauce that you yeah. probably won't like because it's a little bit sweet. I'm trying. But you picked how many five gallons of blackberries right here around this property? Yeah. Yeah. Right and, over there. Yeah. And then I suckered you in because I made you first blackberry cobbler and you went, Okay, that's pretty good. So we, we got to share some blackberries, and I like this drizzled over these wings. Well, so we're gonna I, try I can't it. wait. I bet it's good. We're going to try it. We're I've never had it. that. It's a little bit sweet, and well, you don't like sugar. You know, so well, it's okay. Not. We'll call we'll, it dessert. We'll try some, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's call it dessert. Okay. Let's call it dessert. Chicken for dessert. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the song, Welcome to L.J. Tell me, um, because our audience is going to be bigger and wider than ever before because we're going on YouTube with this. When we think about Ella J, it is truly 90 miles from Atlanta, but a lot of folks have never, ever heard of it. Yeah. I don't know. Is it 90 miles? I said in the song you said that. about 90 miles north of Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So close, anyway. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just wrote about things I remember and people I've known and I dropped a few hints in that song, something about uh, you could get more than you bargained for back in those days in L.J. Well, there's some rough characters hung out at that red dot parking lot. <laughs> uh -oh. Parking lot. And uh, you didn't want to go out there with the wrong attitude or they'd adjust it for you in a hurry. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And uh, back in the good old days. I love cars. You love cars. One of my favorite stories that you've ever shared are about the guys who probably might have run a little moonshine in their life and then learned some amazing driving techniques. I know. And now you build amazing cars from 396 Chevelles with a 375 horsepower engine to... That's 57. 375, not 25. Okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We fixed that 25 business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you love that. And that's kind of your retirement. That's yeah. hey, that's your chilling time. Mm -hmm. I love it up there. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just right there, 57. Yeah. 57. We are actually Monday. That's what I was talking about just now mm -hmm. on the phone. Ronnie Harrington and Glenn Arnold and Josh Gobel are all coming up here, and we're going to set the engine in. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's in the 57 Fairlane? That's the Fairlane, the 390 GT engine. Wow. The that's engine that's cool. liable to shut that 396 down. <gasps> Don't say those words. <laughs> no. Don't say those words. No. Well, it could no. happen. No. No, I don't know about that. <laughs> now, who built... Did some, who built the guy in Blue Ridge? Did he build that 390? Yeah, some guy in Blue Ridge built the 390. Uh, high performance GT. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's uh, it's got a little stuff in it, so it, it's going to snort. Whew. Yeah. I cannot yeah. wait. Yeah, yeah. That, that 375 Chevelle better have it. Better get up early that morning. <laughs> Is Candy going to get her feelings hurt? <laughs> She's only a 312. Yeah. <laughs> Candy's pretty. Candy is pretty. And very dependable, and that's what matters. Now, let's talk a little bit about your other loves. Uh, GMC, you've got a GMC. that Tell a story about how you got that GMC. That's pretty cool. A friend of mine, Ronnie Garland, was the executor of the estate that had that GMC. I had looked at it forever, sitting down there 
rather it's sitting down there under a shed at the foot of Corbin Hill. And uh, a 1950 model. I'm talking with my mouth full. My mouth full. He likes that fish. It's that blame fish. It's so good. I can't stay away from it. But anyway, <laughs> it sat there at the foot of the hill at Portman Hill for 40 something years, 42, we think. Wow. And I never dreamed I'd own it someday. I always looked at it every morning going by there on the bus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And every night. And then uh, the old guy passed away. And uh, now the truck belonged to his father. And he died at 84 years old. The truck was his father's. His, <clears throat> his name was Jim DeGord. And uh, he's, got, he's got grandkids here in the, in the, in the uh, county right now. I can't remember her name, but she is Johnny Connors, Johnny Connors' wife. And then there's Johnny Sue Davis, Ronnie Garland's wife. And she's tied in some way. They brought her home from the hospital in this truck. Wow. You're going to be seeing that truck here a little while later on in this uh Program. We are, yes. And uh, it's, a, it's a good truck. I drive it all, all the time. Please excuse me. I'm, <laughs> I drive it all the time <laughs> around these back roads and count turkeys and deer and bears and, and, Snakes. Yeah, oh, and some wild hogs. One evening that yeah. sort of busted my nerves. Yeah, yeah. Two big wild hogs and two little babies wow. ran out on me up there on the mountain one evening. Mm-mm. And you didn't kill them and bring them home? Uh-uh, yeah. I was scared of them. No, Lord, no. You don't hunt? No, you don't I don't. Fish? don't hunt. Never been hunting. You never been fishing. But games. I will eat your fish. <laughs> yeah, you don't watch wild games. This is called what again? Halibut. Halibut from Alaska. Does it only grow in Alaska? Yes, it does. And it came out of Cook's Inlet in Homer, Alaska. And it is, honest to goodness, I believe it's the best fish in the world. It is really, really, really good. <laughs> it okay. is really good. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, today we're going to share a little bit of your life, a little bit of your music. And, you know, when you started giving me CDs, I would like this song, like this song, like this song. Mm-hmm. But, but I've been wrong before. Was that song that just, it captivates people. And you just, over and over and over. It's a good song. Over and over and over. But then, but then, you gave me the Hank, and that was it. That was it. There's a bunch of good songs on that one. I put that in that Bose system, and it just blasts. And, and that is so cool. So when we, we're going to take a commercial break, and when we come back, we're going to be, we're going to put all the food out. We're going to let the neighbors eat. And wow. uh, you think they'll be happy? Lucky neighbors, yeah. I think they're going to be happy. <laughs> I think they're going to be happy. I think they will. I think they will. Well, we'll be back. And the next time you see us, the table's going to be full of food. So we'll be back in just a minute. Yes. Woo. Woo. in the air. And here go the turnips and the onions. And oh, my gosh. Okay. Fried turnips, collard greens, coleslaw, halibut, wings, sweet potatoes, cream-style corn. That is a fall meal in L.A.J., Georgia. That is a fall meal. And fried turnips are one of those things. I could live on fried turnips. Some people don't like them, but I'm telling you, they are amazing. And that is a fall meal. And pinto beans. I forgot the pinto beans. So pinto beans, collard greens, coleslaw, sweet potatoes, fried turnips, wings, cream corn, and halibut. Does that sound like a meal you could sit down to? Oh, it does, i tell you what. <laughs> Did you notice that he was talking and eating at the same time? Because he liked that halibut. I saw he liked that, that halibut I saw pretty that good. He's an over toward the platter. <laughs> he loved it. He loved it. Um, today, we're going to talk about a couple more events that y'all are doing, and um, I know volunteers for Fogers are very, very important. Are you still looking for new volunteers? You know, we have so many events, Sherry. We're always looking for volunteers. Folks, we got a brand new re-engineered uh, Facebook page. we got a new uh, web page. Please go to FogusNow.com. F-O-G-A-S. F-O-G-A-S, now, N-O-W, dot com. You'll see some of uh, nice pictures on there. You'll see a link where you can go and volunteer for us, fill out a volunteer thing. You'll see a link, if so in kind, to uh, send us a donation to help us with spay and neuters and other programs. And there's also a link for uh, EPEN, L.J. Paul's in need. 
group we partner with. There are 88 volunteers at the shelter. Mm -hmm. They socialize the dogs. They uh, help train the dogs. They walk the dogs. And with so many dogs in the shelter now, LJ Paws and Need has taken over the adoptions. Wow. They've got their own adoption page. So there's a link there, or you can go directly to Ella J. Paws and Need by Ella J. Paws dot org go on their web page look at the animal or at least the dogs that are available for uh, adoption and we're really proud of those volunteers because mm -hmm. they really supplement the shelter yep yeah and, and that's so important and if you want hands-on you can work with epen which is a partner of ours and if you want to help with focus or events sherry said i got time to mention a couple on mm -hmm. uh <clears throat> november the 25th we'll have pictures with santa down at the uh uh welcome center downtown bring your dogs or cats or llamas or donkeys anything you want to bring <laughs> down there and uh, you'll get a picture with santa and mrs santa and uh, that's one of our events october 29th at harrison park they're going to do the candy giveaway again this year focus is going to have a booth they're going to have vendors down there you can come down there with your pets dress them up you dress them up we got a person going to take pictures we're going to put them on our Facebook page, and we're going to have a contest and have people vote on that. We'll give the winner that uh, best-dressed pet and owner a nice gift or something. And then also on the 31st, that'll be on the 31st when we have the uh, contest on Facebook. The last one I'd like to mention is Sherry helped us with St. Patrick's Day of that last year. This year, because of weather concerns and past events, has been rainy and stormy and icy and snowing. We're going to rebrand that event. It's still going to be downtown, and it's going to be Wolf Stock. So we got a lot of leftover hippies up here in the mountains. A lot yes, of retirees like us. <laughs> yes, we, we do. We went through the 60s and 70s, and it's going to be a fun event. You we might have some tie-dyed shirts. You can dress yes. your pet up in a tie-dye and put a piece somewhere around your legs, some sunglasses, and you can do that too. So we tentatively set the date for April the 15th. It takes a lot of volunteers to uh, put that event on. We're in the planning stage. And if you go to our uh, web page, or if you go to our Facebook page, if you'd like to volunteer to help us with that or give us some ideas, mm -hmm. what you'd like to see in Woolstock, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we're open to some suggestions for the public. So sort of put that on your calendar, sort of pencil in April the 15th. Should be a fun event. And it's gonna be a new one for Focus. Mm -hmm. Not gonna do St. Patrick's Day. The weather just hasn't been kind to it's us. It's not been good. No. It has not. No, no, no. But uh, again, this is going to be April 15th, so it won't be too hot, it won't be too cold, perfect day, and hopefully you will have gas money left after you pay your taxes to go to the event. <laughs> It is tax day after uh, all. I didn't think of that, but. <laughs> I always think of that. I hate that day. Okay. <laughs> now, you know, um, again, we, we were laughing about that parade and the pressure that was on me because I love y'all and I know how much you do and how many things you give and give and give. And when Susan asked me to do it, I was like, oh my God, I got to leave ball ground. I got to drive up there. After the event, we talked for a couple of hours. We just laughed and talked and had the best time. And I don't know if you knew this, but when I didn't know who he was, I told him, I said, don't let it hurt your feelings because I said, I was sitting next to Glenn Campbell at a place in Orlando, Florida, and I didn't know who Glenn Campbell was. I was with the Beach Boys, and I looked at Dennis Wilson, and I said, who is this guy? And then I looked at Bruce Johnson, and I said, who is this guy next to me? He, had, he and his wife had just gotten up to go to the restroom, and they said, Glenn Campbell. I said, who is Glenn Campbell? Well, we all know who Glenn Campbell was. Duh, Sherry. But it was it was just so weird when I when I'd gotten that red and white fifty seven Ford you know, hey, how are you? Da 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 da. I realized we had talked in the past about him coming to do the show, but then COVID hit and COVID changed so many things. So um, the event was has been it was changed. One year there wasn't an event. COVID changed so many things, but it did open the adoption 
people were at home more and they were thinking about it. But now I see this um, at Sunday church. We didn't have a whole lot of people in church because it's break time for Cherokee County and everybody went to Panama City. So, so it's a very different time. COVID put us at home, kept us home. Dogs got some homes, but now sadly the shelter is full again and really over full. So, so we need you to get out to the shelter and it is located on Highway 52 East and it's by the jail. <laughs> we'll just say it's by the jail. So, so get out there and adopt a pet, make a donation. If you're shopping for your own pet and you can pick up an extra bag of food, take it to the shelter. Is that not right? Don't they still need food? They do. You know, with COVID and other things, a lot of the access to free dog food and stuff, shelter now has to take time and hunt that out a little mm -hmm. bit more now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We used to get a lot of pallets of food. We don't get that anymore. Yep. So make a difference. Make a difference. It yeah. It does. You yeah. know something. A dog now the, or a cat. The first event is going to be October 29th, but then aren't you going to have one before that earlier in October? Let's well, kind of yeah. get them in the order they're coming. October 1st, tractor supply. Right, tractor supply. I'm October 29th, uh, 29th, 29th is the candy and uh, stuff, yep. It's the uh, Harrison Park where they give out the candy and stuff. Right. We're going to have a contest for the best dressed Halloween pet in, in person. Then the big one is November the 5th. Uh, no, November the 5th, we've got the uh, spay and neuter. Uh, certificate sales and we got the low cost vaccination clinic running at the same time. Right. Big parking lot by the courthouse. Mm -hmm. Y'all come out. It's a, it's a fun event and that takes a lot of volunteers. So I need about go. 15 volunteers for those, those two events going at the same time. Yep. And the last one is next year. Sherry, I want you to be involved again. Uh, maybe we'll you and see if come do out. It. We'll come out with that car, but maybe you're going to be a different car next year. You're going to have to tie-dye yeah. something and put it, the tie-dye Maybe, what does he on. call that little gray car, baby, uh, little boy, little boy. Yeah, maybe it'd be little boy well, He's got a year. collection, I think. He does, it? he does. Okay, we've got to go to something that I want to share with y'all because when I, and, and y'all are responsible for this, what we're about to show now, was shot the week after I met him. And uh, I was at his band practice one night and the band left and then I sat down with the camera and I videoed him and I said, would you please do this song? And every time somebody is at an event with him, this song is requested. And he said, don't people get tired of hearing this song? No, we live in the mountains. We drive to Blue Ridge, we drive to Morganton, we drive to Blairsville. We want to hear Take Me Home Country Roads. So today, we're going to hear Mr. Dwight Sanford or Mr. Ella J singing Take Me Home Country Roads, a John Denver special. And then when we come back from that, we're going to show you something. We're going to show you a little blippet of a farm, but then we're going to leave you today with a little bit of Elvis and a little bit of gospel music. So we're going to rush through some music and we're going to do some cool stuff. And I'm going to tell you, I was an Elvis kid. I was an Elvis lover. I was an Elvis fan. The movie is out now. And I cannot wait to see I've it. I've seen it. I cannot wait to see it. Go so, see it. It's worth doing. Here we go. Okay. Ready?
end today, I, I chose a song by Dwight called Family Circle, and I chose it for a very, very special reason. Y'all know and love the Bible lady. You, you've loved her. Every day she's on here, I get sweet comments from you. I know you love her. Last night, sadly, she lost a um, family member. He was 39 years old, and sadly, he was tragically killed. Um, horrific, horrific time and a, a hard time for her. David was her brother's son, and um, very, very tough time. So I want to go now to Family Circle in honor of Vicki, her family, her mom, everybody who is hurting and grieving her young nephew, David. Here we go. I wonder will the family circle be together once again over their own heaven shining shore they're no more to separate as we sing around God's throne I wonder will Thank you. 